Our call to worship in Psalter, which we will read responsively, comes to us from Psalm 145, verses 1 through 7 and verse 21. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can fathom. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. They tell of the power of your awesome works. And I will proclaim your great deeds. They celebrate your abundant goodness and joyfully sing of your righteousness. My mouth will speak in praise of the Lord. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. Join with me now in prayer. Dear Lord, please give me the wisdom to know what to hold on to and what to let go of. Help me not to hold on to all that frustrates me, makes me uneasy, or stirs up anxiety in my heart. 
Right now, I choose to hand my concerns to you, trusting your sovereign care. When I struggle to release my cares to you, please give me your grace to trust you. Help me not to take them back, but to entrust everything that concerns me to you, knowing that you are good and kind and all-powerful. Prompt me by your Holy Spirit the moment I am tempted to retrieve my worries and concerns. Thank you for caring all that I cannot. Thank you for loving me, caring for me, and watching over me. Thank you for enabling me to live in your very real peace. And now join me in the words that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hi kids. This week my office chair, the arm kind of came loose a bit, and so I asked Pastor Jeff if he could fix it. And he went and got a screwdriver, but when he came in and looked at it, he said, oh, it needs an Allen wrench. Well, an Allen wrench isn't something that we keep handy all the time. So while Pastor Jeff went down the basement to look in his tools, I decided to look in our kitchen drawer. And so I looked in what we call our junk drawer. You might have a junk drawer at your house and it's got some things in it that we use a lot like matches or twist ties or clips, but it's also got a lot of stuff in it that we don't use. Um, like I found this flashlight and we have flashlights on our phone. Um, I guess it kind of works there. Um, but don't really need it. Um, I found um, some keys, and this is a key to our neighbor's house in Wakarusa. Um, I found some old reading glasses. Uh, oh, something for my eyeglasses. Oh, I, I could use that. I wish I had that out. Um, some thumbtacks, uh, toothpicks. You know, a lot of times we hold on to stuff we don't really need. And I'll bet you got a few new things at Christmas time. And one thing we always taught our boys is when they got things new at Christmas, that maybe they could give away some of their old toys instead of holding on to them. And sometimes they gave them to church or to their little cousins or sometimes a neighbor. Um, but throughout the Bible, we read that it's better to give than to receive. And God gives us so many good gifts that I think, um, it's good when we can share those gifts with others. Hope you have a great week, kids. The Old Testament lesson comes to us from Psalm 145, verses 14 through 16. The Lord upholds all who fall and lifts up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food at the proper time. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Our New Testament Gospel reading is from Matthew, the 7th chapter, verses 7 through 12. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. The one who seeks, finds. And to one who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you. For this sums up the law and the prophets. As we start 2021, let me ask you a question. Are you a pack rat or do you give things away easily? One spring, a few years ago, I borrowed a book from the library by a woman named Marie Kondo called The Japanese Art of Tidying. It was about organizing your home, but instead of buying bins and fancy shelves and putting all your stuff away neatly, Kondo's method looked at categories of items all together, like, for example, clothes. And not just the clothes in your bedroom closet, but the ones in your coat closet, drawers, off-season storage bins, laundry room, and under the bed all your clothes in a huge pile on your bed or on the living room floor so that you can see exactly how many pieces of clothing you have. Next, 
You go through that enormous pile by picking up each piece of clothing and thinking about whether it brings you joy. The ones that don't bring joy, you thank for their service and put aside to throw out or donate. The ones that do bring you joy, you carefully fold and store following the KonMari method. Once you finish your clothes, you do the same thing with all your books, kitchen supplies, furniture, etc., ending with your mem memorabilia. While I was on summer break from Bethel, I did it through the entire house in Wakarusa. Not with the boys or Jeff stuff, but pretty much everything else. It was amazing. It was so different from the other times I had tried to go through my stuff and decide what to keep and what to get rid of. I haven't been good with keeping up with the method, but as a new year begins, I'm hoping to try it again now that I'm not teaching at Bethel this spring. The Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes is said to have been written by the wisest man who ever lived, King Solomon. In the third chapter of Ecclesiastes, Solomon famously writes that there is a time for everything, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. I'm sure Solomon could have added, there's a time to open hands and a time to close them. There are times to end things and times to tear things down. But on the whole, the Christian life is more about new life than it is about ending life. It is much more about building up than tearing down. There may be times to hold on tightly, but the Christian life is much more about being open-handed than close-handed. Let me ask, when you see a clenched fist, what words or thoughts come to mind? And when you see open hands, what words or thoughts come to mind? We open our hands to share with others. We open our hands to God. We linked the Jeremy Camp song, Out of My Hands, on our DIY worship page. Here are some of his lyrics. There ain't nothing that you can't handle, God. You're strong enough. Only you can take this out of my hands, out of my hands. You're greater than all my sorrows, worthy of all my trust. Thank you, Lord, that this is out of my hands, out of my hands. God can't take things out of our hands if our hands are closed in fists and holding on tightly. There may be times to hold things tightly. However, the predominant lifestyle of someone who follows Jesus is to live with open hands. It is certainly not to live with white-knuckled closed fists. In particular, we need to hold the things of this world loosely. We are created in the image of God who is more giving than tight-fisted. Psalm 145 describes our God as open-handed, giving everyone and all things what they need. Psalm 145 praises God for his goodness. Included in the psalm is this verse, You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. Christians praise God for his goodness and believe we are created to reflect his goodness. Part of that is opening our hands and being generous with what we have been given by God. Even if you're not motivated by a biblical perspective, the evidence is clear. If you must choose going through life tight-fisted or open-handed, living an open-handed, generous life is much more likely to lead to a life of contentment. Living tight-fisted is not a path to joy. It doesn't even bring security or peace. So why live with open hands? Well, first, open hands allow us to let go of the things in life that are not serving us. I think we'd all agree 2020 was a rough year. We lost a lot. We lost people we cared about. We lost time with people we care about. We lost special events. We lost activities we love to do, sports, movies, restaurants, shopping. We lost traditions. We lost rituals. We know we lost them. And yet how many are we still trying to hold on to? And even if we're not still holding on to them, are we perhaps holding on to the hurt, anger, or bitterness that came with the loss? Most of us are glad to see 2020 in our rearview mirrors and look ahead to the possibilities of 2021. But before we can fully embrace 2021, there are probably some things we need to let go of from 2020. A YouVersion devotional I started this week asks why so many of us persist in tightly holding on to everything that upsets us makes us edgy, or stirs up anxious feelings? Do we trust God enough to really give them up without taking them back? 
Sometimes when I need to let go of thoughts that aren't serving me well, I think about dropping them on the ground or handing them over to God. Nice and gently, or maybe more grudgingly, ready to pull them back at the last moment. The devotional gave me a different picture of how giving up these things can be. It says, just like hurling a rock from the lakeshore far out into the deep, where we aren't in any danger of retrieving it once again. It says to imagine throwing our worries hard and strong straight into God's hand. None of us can throw it so hard or so strong that God can't catch it. Like the things I gave away or threw away when I was tidying, what do you need to throw away from 2020? What can you imagine hurling into the deep water of a lake where you can't easily retrieve it? Second, open hands allow us to hold on more loosely to the things of this world. Jeff often shares about a time when his worry about money nearly led him to ruin our son TJ's birthday. TJ was on the high school cross country team and wanted new running shoes. Because he also loves running, Jeff was the one that took TJ to a store that specialized in running shoes. Once they started looking around, Jeff was appalled to realize that the shoes did not have prices on them. Jeff knows what good running shoes cost, so he started to panic about how much the ones TJ would choose would cost. We didn't have a lot of money at the time, but Jeff was so tight-fisted about money that each time TJ tried on a pair of shoes, Jeff didn't ask, how do they feel? He asked, how much do they cost? He was sucking the fun out of the birthday until the Holy Spirit nudged him to open his hands a bit. Sandy Burroughs, the Trinity music director, and I like to say that one thing we've learned from 2020 is to write our plans in pencil and have a big eraser handy. Jeff and I now use post-it notes on large sheets of paper to plan our message series and the elements in them each week because post-it notes are much easier to move around and change when things don't go as planned. What are some parts of life God has taught you to hold on more loosely in 2021? Holding on to things of this life more loosely keeps us from getting upset or disoriented when life doesn't go as planned. Third, open hands allow us to share our gifts more easily with others. When we're holding on to the things we need to let go of or holding on more tightly to things we should be holding loosely, we may miss opportunities to share with others. Not just our things or money, but our time, love, fellowship, forgiveness, wisdom, and laughter. When my life is like a junk drawer full of stuff I don't really need or use, I don't have as much room for the things I do need and often use. Or at least it's more difficult to find them amid the clutter. If I get so upset about not getting to be with our sons and Jeff's family for Thanksgiving, as we always do, it could ruin my parents' first Thanksgiving in Indiana for several years. The first Thanksgiving, they aren't in Florida. It could keep me from setting up a Zoom call with not only our sons, but my brother and sister's families, whom we pretty much never see on Thanksgiving. And making my parents' first Thanksgiving back in Indiana special. When we moved to Plymouth from Wakarusa a couple of years ago, one of Jeff's former Bethel students and her husband bought our house. We'd been told that Trinity had people to take care of the lawn at the parsonage. We were moving ourselves, and we were running out of both time and space in the truck when we got to the garage. We decided to leave almost all of our yard tools behind. Rakes, mower, shovels, all the kind of things we used to take care of the big yard we had in Wakarusa. And I felt a bit guilty for leaving such a mess, but Jeff pointed out that they were moving from an apartment and it might save them from having to buy a few things. And it turned out the couple was so happy at the gift of our junk in the garage and we had less to move. We live with open hands because open hands allow us to receive God's gifts. When we're holding on to things we need to let go of, we may also miss opportunities to receive the gift God wants to give us, his love, his fellowship, forgiveness, direction, and spiritual growth. Jesus says, ask, seek, and knock in the scripture today. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds. 
and the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Jesus tells us our Father in Heaven wants to give his children what is ultimately good for them. Prayer is not trying to talk God into doing things he doesn't want to do. Prayer is aligning our requests with God's will. God's perspective is bigger and longer than ours. God can even take what we have gone through in 2020 and make something better of it than we can see right now. Jesus says, ask, seek, knock. Ask. The Father has answers we don't know yet. Seek. God can show us ways we can't see yet. And knock. God can open doors that we can't yet. I encourage you to be open to the things God wants to give you this year. But in order to receive them, you may need to open your hands first. So some reflection questions as we start 2021. First, what's something you're holding on to that's keeping you from receiving what God might be offering you? Regret? Frustration? Guilt? What do you need to throw into the deep part of the lake? What do you need to hurl so far out that you can't easily retrieve it? And second, what are you asking God to place in your hands this year once they're open? Are you seeking things or power, a return to the normal life or an easier path than you had in 2020? Is what you're seeking something God thinks is best for you and for others? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness? knowing that as you grow closer to God, he will open his hand and satisfy your desires. Our last song is Seek Ye First. Let's make it a prayer. I'd encourage you to open your hearts and your hands as we sing. to him who by means of his power working in us is able to do so much more than we can ever ask for or even think of. To God be the glory in the church and in Jesus Christ for all time, forever and ever. Amen.